this is a bi-directional phenomenon where you can have gastrointestinal problems, which always in some form, almost always will result in some form of inflammation in subsequently causing insulin resistance itself. So you can have a gut problem causing insulin resistance. In contrast, or let me say it a little more broadly, a gut problem causing a metabolic problem, and then it can go the other direction. You can have a metabolic problem causing a gut problem. So the, the prior um, direction that I mentioned, gut to metabolic, that's obvious and it's usually um, through inflammation, where when the gut is compromised, one, it's invoking a direct immune response at the gut because um, that is the single site of more immune cells than anywhere else in the whole body. This site of interaction between what we've ingested and it now coming into the body. No surprise that we have a huge you know, wall almost of immune cells to make sure that whatever's coming in is supposed to be coming in. Mm -hmm. and, and so a gut problem um, often will result in, in, an immune, uh, in an inflammation problem. And then the more that problem will continue, of course, the more we lose the integrity of the gut and molecules that are supposed to stay in the gut now start moving in to the bloodstream, causing now systemic inflammation, all of which is contributing to insulin resistance. Inflammation is a primary cause of insulin resistance. Now, the the direct molecular mediators that result in uh, or mediate insulin resistance now causing a gut problem is simply unclear. Um, we do know that people with more insulin resistance have a much, much greater likelihood of developing or already having some of the problems, and you just mentioned them, gastroparesis and GERD and, uh, and irritable bowel, but the mechanisms aren't clear. Um, some of what might explain it, and uh, I'm speculating, could be a lack of energy to some of these cells where we don't have, if the cells have become insulin resistant, they might be compromised in their ability to pull in glucose to some degree, meaning that they can't do what they need to do, including say a smooth muscle around the intestines to be contracting and moving the food along through peristalsis. Those are muscles that are helping that happen. And it might be that those muscles are insulin resistant and now they're just more lethargic due to a lack of energy. It might also be a lack of overall all um, protein synthesis within those cells or the maintenance of those proteins because insulin is anabolic. It wants to tell cells to grow things and keep those things. Now that has to be checked, of course. You need anabolic and it needs to be checked with catabolic. But as the cell is becoming insulin resistant, you might be losing some of the anabolic effect of that insulin. And so the cells themselves are compromised in that they aren't making their proteins or they can't keep their proteins. And proteins are really what lets a cell do whatever it wants to do in some way, shape or form, whether it is proteins on the surface of the cell or proteins inside the cell or proteins within the organelles of the cell, it's the proteins that allow the cell to do whatever the cell is trying to do. And, and insulin likes making proteins. We know that people that are vitamin D deficient, you do nothing but give them vitamin D to like, you know, a high quality usable vitamin D that, that increases their plasma vitamin D and they, that alone will improve their insulin sensitivity. So we know there's something there, but, but I don't know that we know the mechanism. I don't. I don't know the mechanism whereby um, sufficient vitamin D is promoting insulin resistance. Thankfully, it's a pretty simple solution. Um, where, where you know that, you know, like if someone does have confirmed low vitamin D, that when you, when you have that kind of clarity, it gives you a simple plan of attack. It, it There's a simplicity to that, which is, okay, I just need to enhance my vitamin D. Mm -hmm.